Hi everyone and welcome to my mixed media tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make this canvas from start to finish. I'll tell you a little bit about how I came to be making this canvas. It's a little bit of a different colour scheme than I would normally use. So it's inspired by some products that I had from the lovely Finnabar um, from her Art Basics range. And I've had a few of her products so um, the colour scheme was uh, dictated by actually what I had in my little collection as well as um, looking at the artwork that Finn creates and using it as a starting point to create a canvas of my own. So definitely inspired by Finnevair and um, forms part of a little audition that uh, I've just put in for her new creative um, team that she's advertising for. So keep your fingers crossed for that one and uh, enjoy hopefully this tutorial and give you a few ideas on how to use those lovely products and embellishments like this one. So I've started out by gathering together some metal bits and pieces and I've been collecting more and more of these so that I can create uh, works of art sort of inspired by Finn, not exactly um, her style because she uses a, a lot of um, all sorts of different bits and pieces in her artwork and it really is quite when you look into it there's lots and lots of interesting things to see and she brings them all together by the paint techniques that she uses on them so this is definitely inspired by um, her technique but a little bit simpler so perhaps a good project for a beginner although one of the techniques I'm going to be using is a little bit messy so be warned I'm starting out by laying a few of my bits and pieces out onto a canvas. This is a 12 by 12 canvas and it's a box canvas so it's about one inch in depth. And I'm starting out by cutting into some of my metal embellishments. A lot of these finer filigree pieces you can cut into with your scissors but you do need to be really careful, they do get sharp. So I perhaps wouldn't do this if I was going to use the pieces on a project that was going to be handle, handled a lot like the top of a box for instance but because this is going to be a canvas that will be hung on the wall I would say that I'm fairly safe that no one's going to cut their fingers on them but you be careful um, if you decide to cut into any metal like this that you also don't um, cut yourself when you're handling the bits and pieces so I've decided to cut these circular elements out so that like filigree circles they could quite easily sit behind um, other bits and pieces which is what I wanted but they weren't quite big enough to sit behind these what will be the flower centers so I've decided to sort of make my flowers bigger by creating petals from those little circular pieces of filigree work now I can't give you all the names of the things that I'm using suffice to say that I can tell you uh, where the products come from so the little filigree circles are a prima product as well as the sort of cup shaped pieces that you'll see me adding glitter to later on. I've got some metal flowers which I actually think are from Ranger and Prima. So um, a bit of a combination there. The resin roses are definitely a um, Tim Holtz Ranger product and the filigree corners that you see uh, I actually don't end up using but they are from Creative Expressions. So you can see I've really gathered to together lots of bits and pieces and the leaves that I'll be using are from Creative Expressions. So first of all I'm just trying to design my canvas. I want a sort of flower spray and I want sort of lots of uh, interest on those flowers and um, using my different bits and pieces in my stash in order to achieve that. So I roughly know where I'm going with my design but I wanted to add some interest to the sides of my canvas first and I'm going to be using this um, it's actually a pale blue lace but it doesn't really matter what colour the lace is because of how I'm going to paint it afterwards. So I'm going to be using Finn's 3D Matte Gel which is from her Art Basics range to stick my lace into place. The lace is a little bit stretchy so I'm being careful not to uh, stretch it so that it pulls against the glue. So I'm laying down a layer of the gel and then I am coming over the top of the lace and sort of encapsulating it within a sort of a sandwich of gel. So I'm laying down a layer of gel first, putting the lace into place and then coming over the top and brushing so that the 
um, lace is really stuck down well and you can see I've got a little bit of colour coming off my brush here um, but I'm not in the slightest bit bothered because as I said I am going to paint this all afterwards teach me to clean my brushes properly <laughs> I think this is a little bit of purple colour from a project that I did for my mum <laughs> So that will give me a lovely bit of textural interest on the side of my box canvas. So making sure it's all stuck down well and just trimming off the excess. Next I'm going to be gluing down the elements that I'm using on my canvas. So I'm going to be using some pearl trim to make the stems of my flowers. I'm also going to be using a little bit more of that lace. You can see that before I put my flowers to one side, I did sketch roughly where they were going to end up. So I'm thinking I really like to perhaps use a softer border than initially I had planned with the uh, metal corners. So I think I'm going to be using a little bit of lace instead. So again, thinking about my flowers, I'm just manipulating those little shapes that I created. Um, and again, being very careful not to catch myself on the sharp edges that I've created by cutting into the filigree work. So I'm using a really good layer of the 3D matte gel and it gives me plenty of time to move my shapes about and make sure that they're definitely embedded in that thick paste which could either be something that you're using to add texture or you can as I'm doing here use it to glue down some heavy pieces of um, metal embellishments now I will say that I was a little bit impatient and you will see the result of that as we go along it had nothing to do with whether this um, 3d uh, matte gel glues it was all down to my impatience and you can see as I get going because I was just so excited but uh, having a go at this that I started a little bit too early so I definitely say that as you put these pieces down um, give them time to dry once you've got your um, pieces in place so anybody that's had a look at Finn's Art Basics range will know that many of the products that you buy in fact most of the products that you buy uh, have got more than one way of using them and I'm going to be showing you two ways of using this paste so I'm using it as a glue at the moment but I will be using it as a textural paint later on I could have used it as texture just clear on its own or um, and then painted over it afterwards or I'm actually going to turn it into a coloured textural paint um, and I'll be showing you how to do that a little bit later on so still working on my flowers and adding, trying to sort of get an even spread of those petals which I'm just slate, slately, <laughs> ever so slightly shaping so that they just come away from the canvas a little bit. You can see because the uh, centres that I've used have got a little hole in the middle, um, the glue pushes through and I'm just adding a little bit of weight while those things are drying with a couple of pots of embossing powder that I had lying around on my table. Um, the other thing to do if you are using a thick gel such as this, just keep an eye on any overspill and you can see I tidied that up with a paintbrush. And using exactly the same te technique as I did on the sides, I'm adding two strips of lace to create a sort of ribbony border down the right hand side of my canvas and again I'm using two layers so one layer put down your lace and then encapsulate it with another layer of the 3D matte gel And then I'm adding more of that gel down the centre of the two pieces of lace and adding a 
strip of pearl trim and the pearl trim comes from Bee House Crafts which just makes a very pretty addition I've not quite got enough glue to hold it in place I'm trying to strike a balance between having a decent layer and not having too much overspill detracting from the texture that these lovely flowers will create. I'm going to use exactly the same trim to create my three flower stems. Now as you see this develop you'll, you'll be thinking to yourself well how on earth is this all going to come together and it's all about the different paint techniques that you can use once you've got your embellishments in place and I don't know why but this always reminds me of the collages that we used to do as kids with um, seeds and um, dried peas and beans and things and uh, we used to make these intricate collages and this sort of takes it one step further we're using sort of all sorts of different products to make a picture and then we're going to bring it all together with the paint techniques we choose to put on top of these dimensional pieces. You can see just taking away any excess glue as I go. And then I've got a couple of leaves just deciding which size to go with. I could have gone with different sizes but I end up going with the slightly larger ones. I thought they balanced the flowers a bit more. The smaller ones were just a little bit too small I think. Okay so I think I'm almost there just gluing down those leaves using that same technique of sandwiching the little metal leaves they're quite light so they're not quite as heavy on the canvas as the flower centers are so I don't need quite as much glue but I'm just making sure that I've got plenty there to stick these elements down and then my final element is to add a pearl trim around the edge of the canvas just to create a little frame around the edge and the pearl trim is from the same place from Hobby Horse Crafts here in the UK so there could easily be sort of textural ribbons um, that you're using to add texture if you haven't got the pearl trim could even thread some beads and put a strip of beads along the edge if you wanted to. Now once I've got this in place what I really should have done was given it plenty of time to dry. You can use your heat gun on it if you want to but even so when you're trying to dry things that are behind bigger elements particularly the center of the flowers it's difficult to uh, be able to affect that with your heat gun so I definitely recommend perhaps doing this the night before you want to get painty so to take it in two stages and let it all glue down well check it the next morning and then go from there but before I don't leave mine for long enough <laughs> I'm just using a barbecue skewer to add little bits of glue to the natural pattern of my lace and then picking that up with a little pearl bead. Now I was counting to see whether I had enough of all, all of one colour but it really doesn't make any difference because I'm going to paint the lot so um, you can use up all sorts of different colours of things you know if you're using buttons you don't really have to pay any attention to the colours of the things that you're using in fact you do have to sort of ignore the actual um, colours of the embellishments you're using when you're putting together a piece like this sort of really look at the form 
and the texture you're creating rather than anything else because the colour is going to be completely decided by you by the colours you choose to paint the canvas afterwards. So step one, which I'm starting too soon, <laughs> is to cover everything in gesso. Now because I know that I'm going to be using blue and brown on this canvas, I'm just using a white gesso. But if I wanted to perhaps use shimmer paints, um, I might perhaps use a black gesso in order to go over all my elements. So this is where things start to become texture and I actually quite like everything white and I particularly like when I paint everything blue. So there's lots of design choices you can make along the way here. So I'm using a white gesso and I am covering every single piece that I have laid down, including the canvas, with a layer of that gesso. So I'm using my brush to sort of stipple into all the nooks and crannies that you create by laying down all of these textural elements. So this particular uh, part of the process does take a while and sometimes you might find that you want particularly if you're going to use a light color um, on top of your gesso to use a second coat of the gesso now I found that my sort of lace pieces and obviously the pearl trim was covering quite easily but I did c come back in and just add a little extra layer of gesso to the metal elements once they were dry just to make sure they were nice and white. So you can see I'm taking my time and really sort of getting my brush under and into all the little and that's where you can see things start to move and um, that wouldn't happen if I'd have let it dry so just uh, ignore it I'll try and ignore it uh, but I do like to leave these things in because it does uh, give you a few uh, hints and tips about you know the things that go wrong and what can you do about it I could have stopped and let it dry a bit further but I was just too impatient <laughs> so as you're working cover everything that you can see and then start to turn and tilt your canvas so that you really make sure that you get all of the angles covered with your layer of gesso and of course I'm going to carry that down onto the sides of my canvas as well. And I did use my heat gun to hurry the process of drying up and you can see the trim that I've put down with my pearls has um, slightly wiggled on my lace where I have been um, sort of prodding it with my brush so you'll be able to see there that it's not quite as straight as it was when I started. So now I'm going to be using normal acrylic paint and I've got this sort of sky blue colour with some white and I will be adding a slightly darker colour. I won't give you the paint colours um, names and things because the chances are you're not going to have the same as mine because I've got such a variety of stock of acrylic paint that um, quite often the colours are very very old so uh, you pick colours that you like. It's enough for me to say that I'm using a few shades of the base colour and in this instance I'm going with this sort of sky blue and you'll see that I will sort of lighten that and darken that to give everything some um, shaded interest now that I've created all that textural interest. So covering everything with the pale blue and I'm kind of going a little bit between the white and the blue to start off the process of um, adding different shades of colour and again using exactly the same techniques I did for the gesso to make sure that everything is covered with the paint. So I'm not going to make you watch all of this process because um, well, it's a little bit boring, but just to say to you to take your time and make sure that you get into all the nooks and crannies so that everything is covered with that colour. So now you can see that I've resorted to taking off those flower centres because they just kept slipping and sliding and I thought it was more trouble than it was worth. So I've taken them off and I will glue them on once the canvas is finished. 
So now I'm going to be adding that shading. I've decided to go for the bottom left and the top right corners to be the darkest points on the canvas and trying to get a strip of light running down the diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. Now this is no different to any other form of shading that you do with acrylic paint, um, only that you ha do have to make sure that as you work, you work quite quickly because you, if you're going to be blending out the edges, you're trying to do two things. One, to cover all the elements that you've laid down um, and make sure that they're evenly coated and the other is to make sure that everything blends in nicely. So that, that leading edge, the wet edge of my paint, I don't want to let that become too dry before I add my next bit of colour. So I'm resorting to gluing this down with something that dries just a little bit quicker. I've just got no patience and I you can see straight away that I'm adding that paint straight on top there. So as I move up the canvas I'm adding more white to the colour. So that I get that lighter strip and I've, I've kind of got a little bit of a curve going on because I know that when I put the ground into the picture I want it to be curved slightly so it's not exactly a straight line of shading I've got that sort of slight curve shape that I had on the original sketch And if you work quickly, you've got plenty of time to go back and forward, blending and adding, sort of slightly darkening things where you want them slightly darker and adding white where you want them slightly lighter. It's all about keeping moving and I'm using a flat, about a one inch brush, which also helps with that shading because you've got you're covering quite a big area as you go and then I'm taking the same colors that I've ended up with on the top of the canvas down onto the side so I'm following the shaded pattern that I've already got and you can see that here so I'm just following the shades where it ends up on the top of the canvas down onto the sides. And it just adds another little bit of interest to your canvas. So I've got the darker in the corner and then blending it out towards the light in the opposite corner. I'm resorting to a little bit of blending with my fingertips here. And I can honestly say that by the time I finished this canvas, my fingers were well and truly covered in paint showing I'd had a wonderful time creating this piece. And actually looking at it, you, you might decide, you know, what, I quite like it as it is. If you think that the canvas colors uh, of my final piece are a little bit dark. You could do exactly what I'm doing here to this stage and instead of doing the technique that I'm going to show you, you could dry brush over all your textural elements with white and you could have an entirely different look. So as well as dry brushing with uh, a white, you could perhaps use some pearl or shimmery paints to pick up the detail of the textured pieces that you've put down. So lots of choices with these techniques and lots and lots of different products that, that you can um, use colours that suit the de decor. So I'm going to show you how to do this piece. And like I said, it's not for the faint hearted, but it's a great way to pick up the colours, uh, sorry, the textures of your work. So I've got a really dark acrylic paint here. It's a real chocolate brown. Um, and I'm going to show you how to achieve this look. So on the side I'm completely covering 
everything on the side. Now it looks really drastic to start with. So like I said, not for the faint hearted and you might want to practice this on a smaller piece, a smaller area uh, before you progress to trying it out on a canvas. And the other tr trick to this is to work in sections, particularly until you're used to it because you don't want the paint drying too much um, before you start to remove it. So I'm trying to catch the edge as well of the pearl trim. You are going to need your kitchen roll on standby for this. I've already started using this piece on the other side and you're going to remove the excess paint. So obviously the first wipe is quite messy and I'm starting with a clean piece here now and I'm rubbing over again. Now this is a matter of preference at this point. How much paint you remove depends on the look that you're going for. I'm going to get rid of quite a lot of the paint and I'm going to reveal the lovely texture of that lace. So you can see if you remove too much paint um, you can quite easily add more paint and start again this time being perhaps a little uh, less vigorous with the rubbing of the kitchen roll across the surface of the work. So I'm just making sure that I don't get too much paint on the pearl trim as I work my way around the edges of the canvas. So first of all you add the paint. I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here because of that protruding or those protruding leaves. Make sure you really get that paint into the nooks and crannies because um, that's how that's the residue you're going to leave behind as you wipe off the excess. So what you're doing is you're filling all the texture with the brown paint and then removing it from the raised areas of the things that you've stuck down onto your canvas. This works great with doilies, with lace um, and it really is a nice way to accentuate all that lovely texture. And like I said you can do this as dark or as light as you want to. If you feel that the paint isn't coming away enough you can slightly dampen <laughs> That's quite another technique all in its own. <laughs> so again, just adding a little bit of glue to stick this down. So entirely my fault, nothing to do with the product, entirely down to my impatience. <laughs> so again, I'm going to be working a section at a time. So starting with lace, and making sure that paint is worked in well. And then coming back over with the kitchen roll. And you can see as you start to wipe how that lovely texture begins to appear and this also will emphasize the texture of the canvas itself it, uh, as you rub that paint away so it really does or it's a really good technique to use if you want to reveal all of that lovely texture. And you can see I'm using the tissue wrapped around my finger to get into those more delicate areas. Anything that falls off I'll stick back on afterwards. <laughs> And then it's just a case of working your way around your canvas.
covering first with the brown and then removing the paint to reveal that lovely texture of all of the elements that you've stuck onto your canvas. And it's really worth spending a little bit of time around those flowers making sure you don't have too much paint left behind and it is obviously a little bit more tricky the more texture there is on a particular piece but just take your time and you will soon reveal all of that beautiful detail of those metal pieces and then for an extra bit of emphasis I'm just going to um, dot my finger into some of the light coloured paint just sticking a pearl back on here and I'm going to emphasize that texture a little bit more so very very tiny bit of paint on my finger and then smudging over the top of that texture and again it just adds another element to the tones that you're creating by the adding and removing of paint on your canvas. It really does make it look quite vintage, this um, technique, particularly using this brown colour. And then just highlighting that lovely lace by rubbing the paint over the top of it. to some of the pieces that I will be attaching to those flower centers. I have painted the roses in a blue color and then I'm going to um, show you how to make them match your canvas in just a second. I've also already added um, some micro beads and glass glitter to these pieces that will form my flower centers once it's all put together. And I've been painting the metal flowers sort of all in various shades of blue but you can see um, as you put your canvas together you can still change some of these elements if you haven't got the colors quite right so I have been using my glossy accents and um, some midnight blue glass glitter and some bronze micro beads to make these sparkly elements for the centers of my flowers. And rather than show you the whole thing because I had to let it dry, I'm just gonna show you me now uh, filling in a few little gaps that I ended up with. So working on a little piece of scrap paper to catch the excess glitter or beads. I'm just filling in any little holes that I've got left with a little bit of glossy accent glue and then I'm going to use a combination of the beads and the glass glitter together. So sprinkling on a few beads first and you really do need to catch these in a tray because um, they run everywhere and they're quite static as well. I'm just trying to get a nice balance between the bronze microbeads and the midnight blue glass glitter. And sprinkling it into that wet glossy accents and frosting these metal centerpieces. And you can see that they just bring that little bit of sparkle to the canvas and the colours match beautifully with the colour scheme we've got going on already. So as well as using the 3D matte gel as a glue, I'm going to be turning it into a textured paint. So I'm taking some of the gel out of the jar and adding a generous portion, <laughs> more by accident than design, <laughs> of the Art Ingredients Mica Powder. This colour is actually called Rust, although it looks very, very chocolatey and uh, it's full of pearly goodness. So I'm just making sure all that mic mica powder is mixed thoroughly into my texture paint 
and then I'm ready to apply it to my canvas. So I'm going to create sort of a, an area of ground in which my flowers are growing out of. Now again you're going to have um, areas where you're going to add the textured paint and then it will encroach automatically uh, no matter how careful you are on some of your um, dimensional elements but it's just a case of doing exactly the kind of thing that you did with the paint which is just removing the excess from those raised elements just to reveal them once more so I wanted the colour in behind the leaves so I'm just literally putting it over the leaves and then wiping the excess away so following that curve that I tried to create earlier with the graduated paint colour and I'm using a palette knife in order to add my uh, texture paste but you could quite easily be using a, um, a paintbrush if you wanted to do, to do that um, or any other kind of way of, of, of spreading this around and the idea is I'm tr not trying to get a smooth finish I'm almost trying to get like a grass uh, texture going on in the background so I'm using a combination of my palette knife and a barbecue skewer and dragging it up and down up and down sort of scribbling up and down in the texture paste while it's wet just to add that grassy texture and I'm also going above that sort of arch or arc that I've created um, in order to soften that slightly and make it again look a little bit more like a grassy hill or piece of land that the flowers are growing out of. So really working that texture paste backwards and forwards, scribbling up and down along that edge, either dragging up the texture paste that's already there or when that's not working just adding a little bit of the texture paste to my bar barbecue skewer and then scribbling that backwards and forwards softening that hard edge in the texture paste just keep working till you're happy with the overall result now I am working on this quite quickly because I want to be able to add some more sparkly embellishments into the mix. Again to soften that edge even further and treating the texture paste as a paint I've got a slightly damp brush and again I'm just dragging the very edges of that paste upwards onto the canvas so it spreads the mica a little bit more and just creates a softer edge moving up the canvas and then whilst everything's still wet again I'm sprinkling on a few of those rust microbeads and some of the blue or midnight glass glitter it just gives a little bit of sparkle into that texture paste and because that texture paste is actually like a glue it will hold it in place once it's dry. So at this point you can tap off any excess and see what you've actually got sticking to your canvas. I decided on the word dream for my canvas. This is going to be a little bit tricky to see the letters. You can just about make them out. They're a plastic letter that I had in my stash and then I'm using again that texture paste but this time I am smoothing it out more and using it as a paint to make my letters match my canvas. I picked the word dream because for any of us that tries out for any kind of design team it, it always is a dream come true when you actually make it onto the team so I thought the word was quite appropriate for the project. So I'm making sure that the letters are covered in that lovely mica paint that we've created by mixing the 3D matte gel and the mica powders. 
and then clean up your craft mat and let those letters dry before sticking them to your canvas. So preparing a few more elements. I felt these were a little bit dark now that I've got that glitter in situ. So I've decided that I'm going to lighten them slightly and that's the beauty of using your acrylic paints. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a lighter blue to these flowers. And that makes them stand out nicely against that glittery background. And then I'm using a little bit of glossy accents to attach the elements of my flower together. So now I need a darker rose rather than the blue that I've got and that's where the technique you've already learnt comes in. I'm going to cover the flower with some brown paint and then wipe away the excess to reveal the shape of the rose. So we base coated it with the blue acrylic and then we're tapping away with a piece of kitchen roll that excess paint and we've made our roses match. The canvas. I'm going to do the same to each of the elements of the three flowers. So you can see how lovely and messy my fingers are getting now. <laughs> look at the difference that that extra coating of the brown paint makes it really does bring out all that lovely detail of those roses might not be the traditional color of a rose <laughs> but that's our artistic license The three flower centres complete. And whilst that glossy accents is drying, I'm now going over the front of the canvas exactly as I did around the sides and taking a little bit of paint on my fingertip. And the trick is to really keep that finger dry. So I'm dabbing it into the puddle of paint and then tapping it off on the container so that I've really got a tiny bit of paint on my finger and then rubbing it over those raised elements. And you can see how um, can easily make those leaves stand out once more after I added that texture paint and covered them up slightly. I'm not trying to do the whole thing. I am deliberately trying to keep it patchy. I want it to look worn um, and distressed. So my letters are finished and dry and they are going to fit in just about here so perfect size for my canvas. I'm just going to stick those on with some making up my mind what to use <laughs> with some glossy accents. So I'm almost there now. I'm just adding a little dollop of the 3D matte gel and going to stick and leave <laughs> my flower centers to set in the middle of those flowers or those petals, should I say. 
and it really that little lightness on the flower centers just brings that canvas together and I just wanted to add a few more little bits of sparkle and texture glossy accents is a great way to do that so I'm going to make my letters lovely and shiny by adding glossy accents to each of the letters now the trick when you're adding glossy accents to anything is to keep the no nozzle submerged in the puddle of liquid while you work if you do that you will find it very difficult to add air or air bubbles into the mix so although I'm scribbling with the bottle I'm keeping that nozzle in, submerged in the glossy accents liquid I'm also adding some shine to my leaves so again just flooding the shape with the glossy accents and then last but not least I'm going to add some more interest to the grassy area so I'm going to create some more texture again starting with my glossy accents I'm literally just kind of imagining little seeded grasses popping out and just adding little dots of glossy accents in lines along that grassy edge And I'm going to do exactly the same, but this time I'm using a Perfect Pearls. So this is Liquid Pearls by Ranger and it's a colour called Dark Chocolate. Yum. <laughs> And I'm just adding a final little flourish to each of those flowers and then I'm going to call that done and I really have had a great time. Now you will not know this but I started this probably about 12 o'clock at night, don't know why it just came into my head. I wasn't going to make something special um, for the audition because um, you didn't have to, just had to show your work as an artist. and. Um, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I started to think about the products that I had and what I could use and I wanted to do something based on Finn style so here it is. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've given you a taste of how you can slightly simplify the gorgeous things that uh, Finn does just to start you off, to, to ease you in gently to the technique. The basics are there of putting down your um, elements first gluing them into place to create your shape or your design or your in this case picture and then covering everything with gesso and paint and then revealing the texture either by dripping on paint or as I did here putting paint on and wiping paint off so I hope that I've inspired you to give it a go because you can see I had great fun once this glossy accents is dry it will be completely clear and uh, I really have enjoyed putting this piece together and I hope that uh, I've inspired you to get your paints out and get messy. <laughs> so here are some close-ups of all that lovely texture and you can see the true colours of the canvas here. Because I work through the night my um, lighting is always a little bit yellowy when I film at night so these are the true colours of the canvas and you can see how that blue and brown work together um, and all that lovely texture that's been revealed by this paint technique. I love how that lace stands out on the edge of the canvas. Lots of lovely glittery embellishment to the canvas and there's a close-up of how those flowers stacked up. 
So all that's left for me to say is hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and in particular the share button because that always helps me out spreading the word and spreading the creativity. Until next time, thank you for watching. So here are the links to some other mixed media projects that you might want to give a go. This was a Tim Holtz assemblage clock with lots of mixed media goodness going on to make that frosty look. Great piece for Christmas home decor. Uh, there's also an art journal page. Again, this is looking at a technique of dripping your paint in order to reveal texture that you've laid down with texture paste. And I've made a little tissue covered album which again provides lots of mixed media texture to play with. I'll show ex you exactly how to make that. I made mine to store stencils but you could quite easily turn this into a mini album. And last but not least is a canvas that I made with lots of lovely texture with texture paste and lots of different techniques for revealing that texture on a canvas. And then if you'd like to pop along to my Etsy shop, you will find workshops that I sell over there for bigger projects like this one. This is the Pyramid Mini and it can be made to suit anybody that you want to give it to. In the little drawer underneath there is a mini album, so great for marking a special occasion. This could be all the party photos at a birthday for instance. Uh, great way for using up your pattern papers as well. And when you give this as a gift and somebody opens it up and reveals this beautiful hidden surprise inside the pyramid it really is a lovely piece for somebody to keep to mark a special occasion and you'll find that workshop over on my etsy shop see you later